welcome to episode number four with uh, my chat with uh, a friend of mine called Amy. We've kind of become friends uh, over Instagram because uh, she's an amazing artist um, who I started following not too long ago and have bought quite a few of her prints which we'll we'll talk about. Um, I'm recording the intro indoors because it is raining uh, quite a lot outside and I didn't really fancy taking my camera and stuff outside. We recorded this episode again in January. Um, not much has changed in the UK. We're still in a lockdown. Um, can't really do much. Uh, but this past week has been quite busy since the last episode. I did a live chat with another Instagram friend of mine um, called Abby from at Calm Homemade, who most of you probably do follow. Um, so if you want to go and see that conversation, you can go on over to her Instagram and check that out. Um, it's on her IGTV. I believe um and that conversation was really cool we got to talk a little about her new project that she's working on uh where it's kind of connecting um the kind of fiber community um from around the world really uh we also talked quite a bit about mental health as well so it was a really really good conversation the other things i've been working on this week we filmed episode two of the youtube series that i'm working on with the herbert art gallery and museum um, historic cooking uh, and that was a lot of fun and we ate quite a lot of uh, cheesecake so um, that video is out at the end of March so yeah I'll definitely shout about it when when it's out. I'm also going to put together a little uh, behind the scenes video for that episode as well because um, I, I think quite a few people quite enjoyed that so definitely check that out on my Instagram and YouTube. Um, apologies if you're watching this video at the beginning, uh, my camera for some reason didn't really work, so you've kind of got my low res uh, quality at the beginning, um, but then my camera does start working uh, at the end as well. Uh, my mum tries calling me and um, the camera kept cutting out. Also during this conversation, we do mention a sloth print um, and you can, if you're watching this, you can see behind me, uh, my girlfriend actually got it for me for Christmas, for my birthday. Um, you got me something for Christmas as well, didn't you? That's it. I got, I got the past one for Christmas and Joy got me the soft one for my birthday, um, which was on the 4th of Feb. Yeah, it's on the back here, but we still need to get frames, but it's quite hard when shops aren't open at the moment. Amy and I slip into conversation and we talk about um, what inspires her when she's drawing. We talk a bit about how we both got uh, a dog during lockdown. She got her dog about two months after us. I learn where I can find some of the funky shapes of pasta that I've seen from her print. What it was like doing markets and how fun it was and the online market kind of scene. We also talk in this conversation a bit about a collaboration that we want to do um, and we're still in talks about it but it's something that we need to work out. But So definitely keep an eye out. Uh, at some point we will be doing a collaboration uh, together with my crafts and her amazing drawing style. Um, at the end of the conversation, I'll be back with just a little bit more chat, um, but we slip into the conversation with me asking how she started illustrating. Well, I did fine art at college. I hated it because I don't like painting on such a big scale and I used to always get shouted at for trying to draw little things. But then I did an art foundation year and then I realised that I can do illustration, it was an option, like I was doing book covers, things like that. And then I joined uni and it was an illustration and graphic design course. So first year you did illustration and graphic design and then I chose illustration in second year once I'd kind of definitely decided on it. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think I just I grew up and I was obsessed with like the Moomins and Tove Janssen and things like that but I didn't really know that it was illustration until I did my art foundation I was like oh that's what it's called actually so, now you said the moomins like I can see <laughs> that kind of cuteness kind of going on yeah in your, I am your obsessed artwork. with the moomins yeah like I, I wouldn't have necessarily thought like that was like an inspiration but actually like yeah. just looking at the eyes you can tell you that you've kind of yeah oh definitely awesome um so have you like been into art and drawing from like an early age or 
I think so. My dad was always really good at drawing, but he's not done anything with it. So he's an upholsterer now, which I suppose is kind of crafty, but he kind of gave up on his drawings. But when I was younger, I used to always look through his folders that he had of all his old drawings. And he used to do like very like detailed sketches, like he used to draw horses and people. And um, But when he was younger, he had a cartoon in a local newspaper and he'd never showed me any of them. He kind of like took them to one side. But once I saw them, I used to always try and copy them. So I've been like doing that since I was like seven or eight and that then I really just fun. carried on. Yeah. So I had that encouragement, which was really good, I think. Yeah. Have you tried redrawing them in your, your style now? Not necessarily. Like my dad had loads of drawings for horses and I used to always try and copy them, but I'm not good at drawing horses yet. I'm, I'm working on it. I can draw a giraffe, but not a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to make the neck a little bit longer. Uh, shorter, yeah. Even. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, uh, I absolutely love your art. Um, oh, thank you. Which is why we've already bought um, a few pieces. <laughs> and I know, I'm worried your house um, is going to be full of my drawings. Uh, it, it will. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. It will at some point. I mean, kind of almost luckily for us and our bank accounts, that our apartment is quite small. So there's only so much art that we can actually have up. <laughs> um, uh, but I know that my, my girlfriend's got uh, her eye on the sloth. Um, the soft one that you did oh that's one of my favorites when i was at my last market someone said to me oh have you got any sloth ones i'd definitely buy one so then they messaged me on etsy again the same evening so i just drew one so if someone like requests an animal i just it's a good idea for me because sometimes i get a bit stuck yeah where do you get your inspiration from um i watch a lot of david attenborough so I'm obsessed with David Attenborough and trying to draw a portrait of him at the minute. But if there's an animal featured on David Attenborough, then I'd look into all the species and I spend a lot of time just looking at all the different species of each animal. And then I kind of pick my favourites or whichever, like the most interesting to draw and group them together. That's cool. Just I love did... animals. Yeah, I, I kind of had that feeling that maybe you watched <laughs> a bit of Attenborough and then like yeah. kind of got inspired by that. Um, yeah, because we yeah. love the... Plants. I think on your Instagram, um, you're a cat mum, uh, plant hoarder um, from North Wales. You'd... Yeah, I need to update that's a dog mum as well now. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. always a cat lady. But yeah, we live really close to Chester Zoo as well. So that's a big thing. We go to Chester Zoo as much as we can. We didn't actually go last year because we can't go. But yeah. Yeah. That's I cool. love being that close to it. I have a feeling I might have been to Chester Zoo once. A long that's time really ago. good. It's one yeah. of the best zoos, I think. So where are you from? Because my I'm kind of getting a hint of more northern kind of... Yeah, I'm from I... Warrington originally, so like in between Manchester and Liverpool. Then I went to Liverpool, did uni. Don't know if that had any impact on my accent. And then moved to North Wales in 2018. Okay, cool. So, so just on the border. A... Yeah, awesome. You've been there for a yeah. couple of years then. Yeah. Nice. How do you find Wales? Every time we go, it's... <laughs> It's quite nice. It is lovely. My boyfriend's from Wales originally, so I've been visiting for like the past five years. But then we decided to buy a house in Wales because it's cheaper and nicer than England, I think, personally. But we do a lot of camping further into Wales. We go to Snowdonia when we can. And it's it's just really beautiful, but it's a bit tricky with the accent sometimes. And the like, we go to a supermarket in Lidl and you can't even understand what the aisles are because they're all in Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's quite funny. It does. Yeah. Uh, first time I drove through Wales, I was like, I was baffled with the signs. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. Some of them just look like a sneeze sometimes. It doesn't even look like a word. Yeah, it kind of looks like someone got a bit greedy and scrabble and just grabbed a handful <laughs> of tiles. Yeah, just went like mushed them all over the yeah. sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've got how many cats have you got now? Have you got one cat now? I've got two cats, Dexter two cats. and Manuel, and then Sandy is our terrible puppy that we've just adopted she's yeah we yeah so that what is she a mix you got her from a home yeah we got her from um, a rescue in liverpool but she's originally from bulgaria so they shipped her over with her sister and we was on a waiting list because since i started working from home we said we want a puppy um she's a bit of everything we've got no idea what she is every time she grows we're like oh maybe she's this breed or this breed we think she's german shepherd but don't know she looks like everything yeah, I guess that's the problem with getting a, a kind of stray from a, a European country is that their yeah. their parents are probably quite mixed as well. I yeah. think you got your puppy 
not long after we how old's your puppy um, sandy she's isn't it? yeah she's about eight months ish we're not exactly sure she doesn't have a birthday we just think she's that old how old's yours uh she is about 10 now oh sorry one second oh. for some reason one of my cameras uh turned off um oh. yeah she's about 10 uh, we think now um oh. we forgot doing the math so yeah i think <laughs> you got her about a couple of months after after us yeah what do you find having a puppy though and then trying to get stuff done um luckily for me <laughs> i don't really work from home that much yeah um my partner does a lot so i try and when i'm at home i try and look after the dog but yeah. because i work in catering um there was a, a, a moment when we were out of lockdown and I was working quite a bit more, uh, but I tend to work two, maybe three days a week when we're open. So, yeah, um, yeah, she she is a handful because uh, she's a little <laughs> cocker spaniel. So she is oh. full of energy. Um, yeah, but she's she's starting to calm down a little bit more now that we've got like a good routine. We do like a big walk in the morning. Yeah, that's and good. then she sleeps most of the day and then. We do like a smaller kind of running around walk. Yeah. In the evening. How about oh, you? You're lucky. Well, we take her for a big walk in the morning and then she sleeps all the day, but then she won't go for another walk. She just flat out will just sit down and you cannot move her then. But then she oh. has a giddy spurt at about nine o'clock where she'll definitely chew something. So you've got to just put everything out of reach, otherwise she will chew something. Yeah, we, we found that when she was teething and actually she started to grow out of this um it would be she would sleep like we'll go for a walk have some dinner and then she would pretty much sleep until we start turning off the lights ready to go to sleep yeah and then she would just get up and just like run around and just be a pain and then <sighs> and then after like 15 minutes of us having to like try and get her to settle again then she'll settle but i don't know why that was a thing that's been a thing, thing no. for a while and it's starting to slow down a little bit now which yeah is, which is nice i don't think because like because we've got the cats she's obsessed with dexter so her and dexter are best friends which i don't know how that's happened because he's a grumpiest cat but they just chase each other around so if one of them's awake the other one can't sleep then they just chase each other around the house so i'll be trying to work and i can just hear them up and down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite fun. cute though we keep yeah, trying to get cute. yeah we keep trying to get our kind of our neighbor's cat which is kind of our cat and <laughs> mocker to like interact a little bit more but it is it's hard because mocker just wants to play with her and Mango yeah. does not care and just wants to oh. like chill <laughs> luckily our cats are playful because she just sometimes she'll just jump on them and she was the same size as them when we first got her but now she's at least like three times the size of the cat but they don't yeah. they're not bothered they'll just whack her on the head if she gets too playful Mango started doing that. We have another neighbor cat called Bob, and he, um, he will he'll bop her. Like if he's yeah. if he's not wanting to play, if he's not ready to play or whatever, he'll he'll say, which is smack on the head. Yeah, which is much <laughs> better. And we're trying to like we kind of wanted Mango to do that as well to like set some boundaries. Yeah, definitely. Um. So, are you? Have you let? Where does the dog sleep? Because. It's, we we let her sleep on the bed. But. Yeah, she she started sleeping on the bed, but to be honest, no, my boyfriend works away during the weeks normally, but he's been home at the minute, so she doesn't fit on the bed because all three of them want to sleep on the bed, but if two of us are in the bed, she doesn't fit because Dexter stakes his claim and he will not leave the bed. So she'll either sleep very next to the bed or sometimes she sleeps on the landing if she gets too warm. Yeah. Uh, but she'll that's come and wake good. us up like first thing in the morning we're awake and she's just on the bed yeah <laughs> yeah we yeah because we tried getting her to sleep in her bed um in a crate and she just wasn't having any of it um, no we gave up on a crate after a couple of weeks because we just the noise was unbearable she was just crying and crying yeah we we ended up getting uh like quite a bit like a larger metal crate um which we'll use if we need to go to the shops or we need to go out because our apartment's quite yeah. small we don't have a room that we can put her in um, yeah but sh the bigger crate she's like she's happy to walk into now and it's like a lot more comfortable for her oh that's good um but yeah but we were we were quite against having a crate but 
our apartment size we don't really have a, a room that she could be safe in yeah i think as long as it's big enough the problem with sandy is she's such a big puppy so mm. whenever we see other people's puppies sandy's at least like triple the size so she doesn't even a big crate she's small in so we just shut her in we'll shut the living room off because that's where everything chewable is in and then just hope that she doesn't wee on the bed or anything like that when we're out. <laughs> and I shut my office because if she chewed on my paper, I'd just have a meltdown. Yeah, if she got into your work <laughs> or like, because I think you posted or like I saw that she chewed on your um, Apple pen. Yeah, that was a dark, that was a dark day. <laughs> yeah, I think you had like a bit of a crappy week that week. From, yeah, that was just there. the icing on the cake when I, I left my Apple pencil for two minutes in the living room, came back and it, it just wasn't even a pencil anymore. Yeah, God. The <laughs> joys of having a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so when did you start your kind of Instagram and your business? Are you doing this full time? Yes, I am now. I started, I graduated in t- 2018. So I kind of, when you graduate, it was like, make sure you have an Instagram, make sure you're loading. So it was, but it was just kind of drawings. I wasn't selling them and I wasn't doing much with them. It's just kind of drawing what I wanted to. And then when we bought the house, I started working full time in retail and that was my life. Then I didn't have time to do anything. So my Instagram was just abandoned. But then with the lockdown, the first lockdown in March last year, I kind of took a step back and had so much time. So I started up again and then started my Etsy in, I think it was May last year. And I just was drawing kind of what I wanted to, but I started doing like some prints and cards and I was obsessed with Animal Crossing at the minute. Like I was playing Animal Crossing for about 12 hours a day. It was it was a bad time. But I <laughs> did some drawings of um, some of the Animal Crossing characters and turned them into cards and stuff. And I got quite a bit of a following from that, I think, and quite a lot of sales. So that gave me a little boost. But it was only May last year, which seems a bit weird now. Yeah, I mean, from the looks of it, it looks like you've been kind of doing this for years. Yeah, it was lucky because... It, t- it set off so much in May and then people was requesting stuff for me to draw. So that gave me ideas of what products to design and things like that. And then when I went back to retail, I had like a bit of a crisis and it was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> like this isn't for me. So I went back to retail after the lockdown and just handed my notice in. And it was a bit oh, scary, wow. but I just kind of pushed myself to make sure that I was working full time. That's really cool. It, you've It was scary. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine it was really scary, but it's quite cool that you you had the opportunity to like lockdown really gave you that chance to. Yeah, give it it's a go. hard because last year was so bad and it was it was bad for everyone and it's been tough. But without it, I wouldn't have had the chance to do this, and I would still be working in retail full time, and I wouldn't be doing any drawing. So I am grateful for it in that way. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely been like having more time at home and being able to work on little passion projects and spend time with. Yeah. People I guess always... it helps you a lot as well with your knitting and your dog biscuits and things, having just the time to do it. Yeah, just having a little bit more time to work on stuff. There was about yeah. a month when we were out of lockdown when I was working quite a bit and um, I just didn't really have any time to like do yeah. any knitting or anything really at all. So yeah, this, what, we is third lockdown in the I think, UK? I mean, Wales is... Wales has been in lockdown since before Christmas now. We've kind of been in a lot of lockdowns, but England's gone into a lockdown now, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. Which, I mean, I I kind of think we should have been in lockdown a little bit earlier, personally. But yeah. I, I feel like the rules shouldn't have been lifted around Christmas. I think it was a bit... That's another, that's another podcast. Yeah, entirely. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just been strange, hasn't it? It's not been well handled. Yeah, no, but... <laughs> We're, I mean, we're still going, so yeah. gotta try and make the most of it. Yeah, definitely. Just a spare time that we're all having at the minute, just to get stuff done and then reset a little bit as well. Yeah, it's just so helpful. I think it's going to be hard to get. I mean, hopefully for you, you can kind of keep on pushing and keep keep doing what you're doing. So hopefully, you won't have to have like another transition of like having to go back to like retail or. Hopefully, um. January was scary this year because I was just expecting it to just completely drop off and have no sales because Christmas was mental. Like couldn't move for having to get orders done, was working like 12 hour days. And then I was like, this is all going to end after Christmas day. But it's been, it's quieter, but it's been kind of going through. So I was scared about that, but it's not as bad as I thought. 
that's good yeah i guess you've got to really like take advantage of those like peak seasons but you know it's like what valentine's is probably coming up i'll be the next kind of holiday easter yeah so yeah yeah it's weird having to prepare for them before you even because normally i don't even care about like valentine's day and stuff but i'm having to think about them like before christmas has even ended to get the cards designed and uploaded yeah when i used to work in um hospitality when i had my cafe i would have to plan ideas of christmas menus in the summer which is it's kind of hard to it's crazy isn't it get your head around isn't it yeah um cool um sorry i've made some little notes because i (laughs) tend to like just forget what i'm thinking um what's your favorite design from oh your artwork that's a really good question i really like my plant designs my house plant alphabet but because of how long it took me to design all i think when i look at it now is like god that was a pain but then i really like the look of it and i've turned it into like a lot of other designs but personally i'm obsessed with dinosaurs so my dinosaur print is my favorite your um the alphabet one of the dinosaurs yeah yeah that is my favorite just because i love dinosaurs i want to do some more dinosaur designs that's really cool. Yeah, I really like the idea of the alphabet, um, the things. And you've done a, like a like a growth chart as well. Yeah, that was um, one of our friends does woodwork, and he had a few commissions for height charts. But he's not so much like into his painting and stuff. So he said, if he designs a growth chart, will I paint on it? So that was really fun because normally I just work digitally, so all on the iPad. But mm-hmm. this was fun. I got like the Posca paint pens and was doing it all outside because it was in the summer. And that was such a big change from what I was doing, but I loved it. That's really cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. Like it looks like Thank you. something you would see in a lot of like kids' rooms and stuff. Yeah, hopefully we're going to start designing some more of them now. Yeah, we recently got the pasta one because my girlfriend absolutely loves pasta. <laughs> so I thought that'd be really nice. Um, she can be like, oh, I could be like, which what kind of pasta would you like for your for that's for why dinner? we that's why I did it originally because we have all the jars in the kitchen on the shelf of all the different pastas and I always get the names mixed up so I put yeah. that next to them and now I know which one yeah there's the one that's like a wheel that's the one that we're still trying to find we we can't yeah. find in the supermarkets yeah we always go shopping in Lidl and we've only got like Fusely or Penny and I yeah. want the other ones yeah yeah Weirdly, I think TK Maxx does all the weird pastas Oh, I wonder if that's where I've seen it. Because I know yeah. I've seen it in a shop somewhere, but I couldn't work out what shop it was. Yeah, they do all the weird pastas and all the weird coloured ones. Oh, maybe enough. when they're open again. We'll have to yeah. check it out. I feel like I, I do, <laughs> now we've got the list, I kind of want to make sure that I, I kind of like tick them off. Yeah, um, that's what I've yeah. been doing. Making sure I've got a jar of each pasta now. So yeah, you're, you've got like your prints, cards, bags, buttons, pins... What else, what else do you do? Um, that is it at the minute. That's pretty much everything. But at the minute, I'm working on some... Because I need to reorder my tote bags. Um, I use a screen printer based in Manchester. Um, it's just one woman who does it. So that's what I like about it. But she started venturing out and doing like tea towels, baby bibs, things like that. So looking at getting different, like maybe my whale design on a baby bib, things like that. That's what I'm kind of venturing into this month that'd be really cool have you tried yeah. have you looked into um it's something that i kind of want to get it's uh it's from hobbycraft it's like a cutter it's like you can program it to cut things oh i can't remember what they're called but yeah that's what i really want because at the minute or... oh cry cut is it quite yeah quite. maybe yeah. something like that i can't remember but yeah yeah that's what because really, when i send all my orders come with little stickers you'll probably know but i mm. cut them all by hand and i don't know why i do that because it's a nightmare yeah i imagine if you had that it would it would save you a yeah a, so that's much my time. like evening hobby you take all my paper downstairs and just cut all my stickers out while i watch telly downstairs yeah i can imagine that's a bit harder now with a dog as well <laughs> yeah she likes to chew them <laughs> yeah but i definitely want something like that they look really good i think they're expensive but it looks like a good investment yeah i think for the time that you would save like I, i'm i'm quite tempted to look into the the mini one but i'm not yeah. exactly sure what i'm going to use it for i just 
I like the look of it and I have <laughs> ideas. Like I would love to, I used to do screen printing on t-shirts years ago. Uh-huh. But, um, I feel like that's a much easier and quicker and more efficient way of like doing small designs on t-shirts. Yeah, because you can do the vinyl printing on it, can't you? And then you just heat transfer it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so you, that would you have really this good. like iron thing. Um, and then I like the idea of like eventually having like um, a mug like for the podcast with like the podcast name or something on so yeah people can get I, something that a lot of podcasts do is like have like yeah. some kind of merch but I love something like that though I just I don't like buying normal mugs and things from the supermarket I'd rather have like each mug personalized or somewhere I've been or something I listen to yeah so I think people would definitely buy that yeah um what do you do when you're when you're drawing like what do you have music on or podcasts or um, I listen to a lot of murder podcasts, which is interesting when I'm drawing really cheery animals. <laughs> but I like to listen to like a lot of true crime. So I like my favourite murder. Um, I think it's an American one. Mm-hmm. Um, anything like that. Or I like, um, what's the other one I listen to? There's one called This Podcast Will Kill You, which is dark as well, but it's about like all different diseases. So okay, completely unrelated fun. to what I'm drawing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, that's fun. cutesy little things and listening to really dark podcasts, but yeah, no, I I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts as well. Yeah. I think they're quite. Have you heard of a one called Small Town Dicks? No, it's um the person I can never remember her name, but it's the person who does the voice for Lisa Simpson. Oh my god! Oh, I have heard of it. I've heard. I didn't know that was what it's called, but I've heard people talk about that. That yeah, and the voice she... of Lisa Simpson has one. Yeah, and she's got two friends who are detectives and she kind of talks to them and other detectives about real cases that they've worked on. Some of the cases are quite dark and horrible, but that's the nature of true crime, really. Um, But it's just presented really, really well. Yeah, Um, oh, I'll have to listen to that. Yeah, I think that's probably one of my favourite true crime kind of podcasts. Yeah, I hadn't even listened to a podcast till last year because I just didn't have time. And then I was just drawing in silence, so I'd put the radio on and it was really boring. And then I, I hadn't even, you know, the little podcast app that you have on your phone, that was just kind of in like a rarely used folder. Yeah. So it dug it out and I was like, oh my God, there's all these things to listen to. Yeah, I think I started listening to podcasts a few years ago before. I think now, especially with lockdown, podcasts have like exploded a bit more because people have got yeah. a bit more time. There's only so much stuff you can watch on Netflix. Yeah, I've run out. Yeah, we we kind of... There's a couple of series now that we've kind of like they've managed to get another couple of seasons, but I'm I'm worried that like in a year or so there's not really going to be anything because no. people can't produce anything at the moment. Yeah, that's true. They can't it? they can't film. But you can produce a podcast. Yeah, you can do a podcast over yeah. online over Zoom, so it's a lot easier to do than get a bunch of actors together. What made you come up with the idea to start doing your own? Um, mainly. Well, it was a couple of things. Mainly, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I really enjoy um, listening. And there's a few like video podcasts, which is like this is the one's going to be. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is from kind of lockdown, there was like I've every now and again, like spoken to a few creators and wanted to do some kind of collaboration. But then the whole coronavirus happened. and. Yeah not being able to travel or do anything I thought doing a podcast is a way that I can still do some kind of collaboration and talk and get to know people um yeah yeah, I'm just interested in how people get started into crafting because I think crafting can be quite a kind of meditative and yeah definitely therapeutic kind of thing um and hopefully I can encourage more people to to get into it yeah, I think a lot of people now are kind of sat and they don't know what to do with themselves, but it's so therapeutic to just be doing something that, like, your mind's just completely focused on that one thing that you're doing and then you're making an outcome, I think, is the main thing. Yeah. You're actually producing something that with your time. Yeah, because I, I know that, like, I used to feel a bit guilty about just sitting and watching TV because it felt yeah. like a waste of time. But if I'm knitting... I'm watching TV. I don't feel like it's as much of a waste of time because I'm still being productive. Yeah. And then you can see what you've done with your time as well, can't you? You've got that that knitted product that is kind of the outcome of the time rather than just you've sat and done nothing. Yeah, exactly. 
so yeah i'm just hopefully hopefully encouraging more people to um to craft regardless what it is it doesn't have to be knitting it could be drawing yeah. um who else am i talking to um i spoke to a musician as well so oh that's a good one any kind of creative outlet um hopefully yeah. people get inspired to do but oh yeah. that's brilliant yeah um so do you because you're working from home do you have do you try and set yourself time to draw like do you have your work hours i did so normally i'll get up at about eight take the puppy for a walk and then start working at about half nine or ten but that time it used to be my drawing time but now it's just my getting orders ready going to the post office like getting stuff organized time so i find that I used to try and do a nine to five, but now kind of my evenings are my only time to draw, mm-hmm. which I don't mind because if I just sit down and watch telly, I just end up fidgeting. Yeah. So I'd only be like scrolling for my phone or something. So I'd rather just be drawing in that time. Yeah. But it's, it's hard trying to do set hours when there's, because as soon as you have a spare minute off, you're like, oh, I could be doing that and I could be doing this. And, you know, you forget to eat sometimes. Yeah. I find. Yeah. I've, uh, I mean, I'm quite food orientated, so I, <laughs> I very rarely forget to eat. But um, I know what it it can be like because I know that sometimes my partner would just just work all the way through. Yeah. Like if she if I didn't remind her, I I won't forget to eat as such. I'll just forget to cook a meal. So my because it's quick, I'll just go downstairs and grab like a whole share bar of chocolate and just eat that for dinner, <laughs> just because it's quick and easy. Yeah, not not the most nutritious dinner, really. No. But um, easy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, because I can see you've got two printers behind you. Do you print um, everything yourself pretty much apart from the, obviously the bags? Everything except for what's screen printed. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why I print my own greetings cards. It's annoying and it takes ages and I have to cut all the paper, print all the paper when I know that the majority of people who sell greetings cards to get them printed in bulk. But I just find it really therapeutic. So I've been doing it for a while. Um, yeah, I print my greetings cards on that small one and then bigger prints, so like A3, A4 is on the bigger black one. Mm-hmm. But it, it works okay. It's only like the small printer breakdown every now and then. I guess it's easier to manage your stock levels. Like you don't have to have, like the minimum order for like prints and stuff is like normally a couple of hundred, isn't it? So it's like yeah. storage, I guess. Yeah, and there's something nice about printing it to order, I think, as well. It's a mm. bit of a pain when I go and do a in-person market because they kind of have to make a big spreadsheet and I'll spend like a whole week in advance printing everything when I think if you had stuff printed made to order and you had a hundred of them or so it'd be a lot easier yeah I I do I like have been in control because I can print one check it there and then check for any errors or any marks or anything and then I know that I'm happy with it yeah it kind of gives you that uh level of control that you don't have if you get someone else to do it Definitely. So, um, yeah. How many markets have you done now? Do you have you? Um, I think I only started doing my first one was in August last year, and I think I managed to do four last year, kind of in between everything closing down. I had a few more booked that got cancelled, and then there's none booked for this year, obviously so far. Yeah. But they're really fun. Yeah. I've, have you done any markets? I've done two in-person markets. Yeah. Um, past couple of years. Um, which were really good, and really fun. And I was meant to do one uh, just before Christmas, but we Coventry went into tier three, um, uh. which at the time was like the highest level of the tier system. They've now yeah. changed the rules. Um, and they decided that they weren't going to do a physical, ex- uh, physical market and they did an online market. Yeah, there's been a lot of online ones, hasn't there? Yeah, I don't, it didn't it didn't go particularly well for me. Um yeah. I think there's probably some people that did okay from it, but I know that um because I do uh, I'm I work in hospitality, so I'm I'm quite comfortable doing the face to face talking yeah. and the upsell and stuff. So and uh it's much harder to do that when you're online. Yeah. Even if you just have a chat to like if you're at a market and you say to someone, How are you today? Do you probably going to buy something because you've spoke to them yeah, whereas in exactly. person they can just scroll past or you know online they scroll past yeah. it straight away and i think there was 40 stalls per weekend so 
like it would have been a bit different because quite a lot of the stalls were kind of replica i think there was only one as a knitter that was in my block but normally there's like two or three people that sell plants and there's a lot of repeat so it's easier if like i had a big stall that i could show off and talk to people about but you know hopefully next year we might be able to do markets again i started doing online ones i did a few like probably july time last year when everything was properly closed and i don't think i'll do them again i think i'll just wait for like in-person ones to go and then start pushing my own etsy instead i think it's a bit more worthwhile yeah i think i'm the same i think I would rather spend my time and money like promoting stuff on Instagram and having a big push on my Etsy account or something than pay someone else to do a a little bit of advertising. Yeah, I was with one of the main companies and I ended up leaving after one of the markets because I think in a way they was just taking a lot of money and they was just taking money from all these sellers and not pushing much out. Yeah, luckily the the market that i i did they the online price to do it they was way cheaper so i was able to get quite a big bit of a refund um but yeah markets are expensive because of all the like insurance and stuff yeah that's a big thing like i'm paying for insurance now but i don't know when the next time i can do a market is so yeah it's one of those isn't it i've been a big fan of your artwork since i saw it whenever that was um, and I have a lot of hats and my dog has eaten a lot of biscuits. Yes. So we're big fans. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I've, I've been working in catering for a long time and I've always wanted to make some kind of cookbook or recipe thing. And I think the collaboration of having some like almost like a, a zine with a few little kind of like recipes for dogs and I potentially got the idea of like an actual human recipe little cookbook yeah. as well having your illustrations in it rather than photos i think it would just be a little bit different yeah i love um great British bake off i can't is it tom hovey the illustrator for that and he does all the little illustrations of all the cakes and i love that i think it looks so much better than just a photo of it yeah yeah i think i've actually got one of these one of my cookbooks has got like illustrations and stuff in it and i think it just it just stands out out a little bit more and yeah um because it's not an actual dog you kind of can picture your your dog yeah instead a little bit easier so it makes it a little yeah. bit more personal even though it's not personal yeah i get what you mean and i think yeah. i prefer illustrated stuff i don't know if it's because i like art myself but mm. i just do I'd, I'd be more drawn towards an illustration than a photo yeah a lot of the time yeah so i mean i've got a couple of recipes that i've um kind of written down i still need to work on some um i'm hoping once i've kind of sorted this kind of first season um of podcasts i want to try and do like five or six episodes um yeah put them out there in the world and see what happens and if people if i get a good response then i'll do another season and try and get some more people on yeah um, but in the meantime, when it's out in the world or when it's getting released, I'm going to start working on more recipes. Um, so there's a good chance you might get some samples. Um, oh, she, those cranberry stars. She was just obsessed. Yeah. She broke into one of the bags and just ate the bag. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried any of the biscuits yourself? No, I, I haven't actually. Okay. I've sniffed them. I've had a good sniff. And... Yeah, because you can... Because I, I try them myself when I've baked oh, them. I suppose and you they, have to, don't you, to know that. Yeah, and they, they taste fine. There's just no salt. Uh, the cranberry oh. ones were quite good because the cranberry kind of gives it a bit of sweetness, so it did have a bit more flavor. Um, the cheesy ones that I do can be quite nice. But again, yeah. if they were for people, I would definitely add salt. Yeah. Um, I feel like if I ate a biscuit, though, she would just look at me like, you've just eaten my biscuit. That was mine. <laughs> yeah, the betrayal in the dog's eyes would, yeah, not be no. worth it. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I think I would, I mean, I'll definitely send you some recipes and you can have a go at baking some yourself and yes. um, get people to try. I'm try awful out, at but... baking, absolutely awful at baking, but oh, there, if I can it's... do it, then anyone can. So I, am, I think I'm They're the simple. Master. There's like maybe... There's only a few ingredients in them and it's just 
very simple and hopefully i might be able to get my partner to try and help me record some of the stuff as well yeah that'd be really good so um that'd be like a little video oh, yeah i love that idea i know that you've got one dog How have you have you done like a alphabet of dogs yet no i kind of got like a dog print that i did it's a couple of years old that one so it's a bit older than my current style but i've got it listed just in case but i want to do an alphabet where it's got like maybe like 50 well, not it won't be an alphabet if it's got 50 just <laughs> loads of dog breeds and then an yeah. alphabet one as well yeah that'd be really i was cool. always a cat lady so i was, like, I was not that into dogs like not that fussed but since we've got a puppy i'm obsessed <laughs> yeah i feel like i'm the other way around i've always been like we never really had a dog or anything but i was way more into dogs and cats and then our neighbor a neighbor's cat came came over and then i i kind of understood cats a little bit more i think cats are still dicks yeah but they are very <laughs> cute so my two cats are awful they're, they're such knobs but they're just brilliant they just got such personalities like if i am doing anything they just will sit on my laptop if i want to edit anything on photoshop they just want to sit on my laptop so i can't yeah, they just want to get in the way, don't they? Yeah. yeah. But I was always allergic to dogs, but since we've got one and I've been living with her, I used to have to take antihistamines at the start and I was really sniffly. But now after a couple of months, I'm completely fine. So We were the same with the cat, actually. It's more so in the summer when she's like, the cat runs into the yeah. grass and brings out all the pollen and stuff. Yeah. Um, in the winter, we didn't seem to have much effect. But I think we're probably a little bit less allergic now which is nice yeah i think if you live with them and then if you've encountered them every day you do mm. get a little bit less i think you build up a is it immunity yeah 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 so you've got your own little office how big is your little office um this is pretty much the back wall i don't know if you can see it and then in yeah. front of me i won't turn my laptop around because it'll just unplug and it'll be a nightmare but i've got like the whole length of the wall is a shelf um, a shelf and a worktop it's a kitchen worktop that I turned into like a desk because I wanted cool. a bigger one um, so yeah it's it's quite big it's bigger I could probably do with another storage unit like this because mm -hmm. underneath me is the whole floor is just things oh, so okay. I <laughs> I'm sat on my chair but then the whole floor is just things like cardboard like a bag of rubbish all different things so yeah it's hard being in here every day and keeping it tidy because I need to use it every day. It just becomes a mess. Do you have like set days of when you'll do orders? and? Um, Saturday, I don't tend to do orders, but every other day I just get them done. If they come through, I get it done. So it's not mounding up too much. Makes sense. But at, at the minute, it's not too busy anyway. So today I might actually treat myself and have a day off. Ooh, day off. <laughs> a day off and play some Planet Zoo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Have you... Um tried have you got a switch if you've got yes. animal crossing yeah yes. have you tr have you played um uh zelda breath of the wild yes i'm not very good at it but okay because I, I can know. imagine like your art style like doing some zelda stuff as well i think yeah cool. i really like zelda i want to do some more i'm not mad into my games i just like animal crossing because you just potter about in it and you, you can't really lose animal crossing so that's what i like about it but um I do want to do some more games ones because I get a lot of messages on Etsy saying, can you do this game or this game? So it's, I've got a little list of things I want to do. So it's like dog prints, cat prints, like more games. Do you, do you feel like you need to be inspired? Like you need to be into it. Like if someone said, can you just do this? Are you okay to like turn it into your own style? Or do you feel like you need to have a kind of drive to actually want to do it? yeah it, especially at the minute I think when I was going out and doing a lot more I did feel more inspired like even just going for a bigger walk rather than just around our area you feel a bit more inspired to kind of maybe translate things into your own style but at the minute if someone says to me like oh can you draw my dog and it's just like a really boring picture of a dog I just don't want to I'd rather draw a dog that I'd like and that sounds really mean no, <laughs> but I sometimes like it's just a blurry photo and they're like oh can you do this in your style and I just think I don't want to I'd rather find my own pictures or take my own pictures and do what I want to do I guess that's the advantage of where you're at now and the fact that you've grown your business yeah so you can probably turn down some of the things like that and 
Yeah. Ma- a lot of the time it's just politely being like, I'll do it maybe in a month. I'm just busy at the minute. Maybe yeah. because then in a month I might think, oh, well, like, I can do it now. I feel a bit more inspired. Yeah. And maybe that could actually lead, like someone asking a question might lead to something like a new series or something. So. Yeah. If it's just a vague question, someone says, like, oh, can you draw a spider? I'll draw them. A sp- I don't know. I'll draw them a spider. But if someone says, can you draw this specific thing? Or a lot of the time it's like, can you draw, can you draw my dad for his birthday? And I'm, I'm not that into that. And I don't think it it's something that I want to get into either. So I prefer to just take on whatever I, I can make work. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, you've got, like, a nice collection of, like, animals and plants yeah. and dinosaurs. <laughs> I, w- I think I want to get into drawing more, like, scenery, so, and I see a lot of nice prints that are, like, pictures of, I don't know, like, living rooms or greenhouses, things like that that I want to draw. I don't really draw a lot of backgrounds that I need to practice on. Yeah, that's something um, I've seen a lot of, kind of, illustrators like my my partner draws and she is amazing at drawing people and um and doesn't really do a lot of like backgrounds and stuff and it's something yeah. that she wants to get on to as well yeah I think a lot of people avoid backgrounds just because it's time consuming yeah I think but I, it, it's worthwhile I think when, when you see a picture of a full background it's really like wow I, I wish I'd done that yeah yeah what uh program do you use when you're recording uh when you're drawing um, it's a mixture so normally normally I start off and I'll just sketch it by hand and then just take a photo of it put it onto my iPad and then I'll use Procreate at the beginning and then I like Adobe Fresco for a lot of textures um, and they have you can add a lot more layers on Adobe Fresco so I'll finish my drawing on Procreate and then kind of layer it up on Fresco and maybe like change the layout and things like that but those That's two cool. mainly yeah nice yeah, because I think there's like a little clip of you drawing and it looked like Procreate because that's what yes, um, that was... my partner uses. So I, yeah. I'm familiar with that one. Procreate's really good. Especially, yeah. if, I think it costs like £10 to buy. Mm. It's so cheap for what it is. And it, you can do it, especially the new updates that they've done on it. You can do a lot on it now. Yeah, it, it does look really, really good. I, yeah. I struggle. I used to do a lot of art uh, many years ago and... I I struggle using an iPad. Yeah, it's a big it's adjustment. A, yeah, it's the like not having the texture. Do you have any other hobbies? I can't remember if I've asked this or not. Um, do, I have do you have hobbies? time? Do you have time? No, for <laughs> I don't have time. Um, I don't like cooking. Don't like baking. Sometimes I'll do a bit of like maybe photography or I like going for a lot of walks. But we can't do that at a minute, so. <laughs> Yeah. This is all I do. <laughs> Fair enough. Does your partner do a lot of the cooking then? No, we just, I don't know. Neither of us are very into cooking. And it's, I wish one of us was. <laughs> but um, at the minute, we just kind of chicken nuggets or corn chicken nuggets because I've gone vegetarian. But yeah, freezer, freezer tapas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, we're trying to eat a bit more vegetarian. To be fair, we're probably like maybe two meals and meat and then more vegetarian but yeah we're trying to be a bit more ethical with our food but yeah I I do a lot of cooking so do you like your cooking though yeah I love cooking I'm guessing Um, if you like doing all your baking and things so you would like cooking yeah I mean I've I've been working in hospitality since I was like 16 um so I've been working in kitchens for a while so um yeah I know I still still enjoy it a lot oh I wish I did (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't I've tried it and I don't mind I like preparing a meal but it just gets so disheartened when it comes out and it's awful it just seems like it's, when I heat it up it goes bad <laughs> I think it's a lot of practice I get nerdy with cooking as well so um like I, I'll listen to cooking podcasts or I've got a thousand and one books about uh-huh. cooking and stuff and that's like some people would like to read a novel or something at night yeah I'm happy just to flick through like a Jamie Oliver cookbook. Oh, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I like reading about different techniques and stuff. And yeah, yeah so I, I kind of get nerdy with food. Yeah, I got the James May cookbook for Christmas, but I've not found a recipe that I can do yet. <laughs> I, 
I don't know what I feel about James May bringing out a cookbook. Yeah, it wasn't, I can't say it was a good cookbook. It was just very boring meals that you could find anywhere. Yeah, it, just, it seemed like a bit of a joke. Um, yeah, I think that's why I got it. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I am a joke at cooking. The, to be honest, the Jamie Oliver five ingredients is a really good start. He's got like a Jamie Oliver veg book and there's yeah. a seven ingredient seven ways as well oh. they're really good because like like the five ingredients you literally have five ingredients you don't have to have a massive list of herbs and spices yeah. that you will that's what i that struggle with i think yeah i think that's what a lot of people get oh. put off by i really hope you enjoyed that conversation uh, that was a lot of fun talking to amy like uh, like i said we've been friends kind of for a bit over lockdown via instagram and it was really nice to have this conversation and i really hope that you enjoyed uh listening to uh someone who draws and an illustrator and that that whole journey uh, i think i forgot to say in the last episode um that i've asked um some of the people that i'm talking to who have got etsy stores to see if they can do a 10 percent discount if you ch- uh, if you type in the code knit slips 10 um, you should be able to get 10% off on their Etsy account. Um, that's um, the three of the guests that I've, I've had so far that have had Etsy accounts. Alida, Bex, and Amy, and myself as well. I'll have a 10% discount. Check on everyone's Instagram and Etsy. Um, I've got links down below. Uh, next week in episode five, I have Mia from Made by Mia. Um, and that's another really good conversation with uh, someone who I've followed for quite a while and seen their page grow. So. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this video wherever you're watching or listening to this. Um, don't forget if you are listening to this, if you want to see some of the uh, the things that we're talking about and some of the prints, then uh, you can always check out this podcast on my Instagram and YouTube channels. See you next Friday. Have a great week and stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Music.